Okay, so let's have a quick look at the um, MS View software that I use to program the solar chargers um, and then monitor them afterwards. Um, this software comes with the chargers um, and the uh, TriStar one is uh, Ethernet connected so I can just connect to it over Wi-Fi um, um, from this PC here in my living room. Um, on the left side here you can see there's a whole raft of different parameters that um, you can read from the device um, in real time. Um, and over on the right here there's a couple of panels with live data coming in. Um, the top one is showing data from the SunSaver 15 amp charger which uh, connects through uh, a data link to the TriStar, uh, which has the Ethernet connection. Uh, the SunSaver doesn't have Ethernet, um, but it has a um, EIA 485 um, serial connection bus um, that the TriStar um, has as well for communication. Um, I'm reading um, battery voltage. Um, the TriStar is reading battery sense voltage because it has those um, no current voltage sensing wires um, so that it accurately knows the pack voltage that it's um, it's reaching um, without the voltage drop over the heavy cables um, it can be up to 60 amps um, through those cables so you could have quite a lot of voltage drop um, and now we're, we are, we're doing about 24 amps now um, the SunSaver doesn't have remote sensing um, um, but has uh, other similar um, values that you can read. Um, I'm not using the um, lead acid um, temperature compensation in the usual way because uh, lithium batteries don't need it and in fact don't like it. Um, you don't want to go increasing the charge voltage above 4 volts um, for any reason. Um, I'm still still got the sensors plugged in but they're behind the AC um, panel leaning against the uh, patio window so it's only reading 9 degrees C there um, might need um, to improve the double glazing there it seems uh, but I could put the sensors on the battery pack to uh, uh, detect any serious fault condition like a extremely heavy current a short circuit or something that was making the batteries heat up but uh, to be honest it's going to take over a thousand amps to do that um, so I'm, I'm never going to see any significant temperature increase there but the charges are set so that above the um, compensation zero point of 25 degrees C um, they will reduce their charge voltage at a uh, um, nominal rate um, below 25 degrees C um, they'll do nothing because I set the minimum temperature for compensation effect to um, come into force at 25 degrees C so it will only ever reduce the output voltage but never increase it above this set um, nominal value. Uh, you can see here the uh, target regulation voltage um, that tells you what the charger is currently aiming for so both chargers are in their bulk MPPT mode um, and they're aiming for the absorption voltage of 28 volts which would hold for 10 minutes before dropping down to the float value. Um, the top charger, the 15 amp one, is actually aiming for slightly lower voltage by design. I've actually programmed that to be 0.1 of a volt lower. Because it doesn't have um, remote battery voltage sensing um, and I want the uh, more accurate charger to do the finishing off. So once the voltage rises above 27.9 um, the 15 amp charger will go into constant voltage mode and will effectively shut down because the voltage will rise above that um, and the uh, the TriStar charger will do the finishing off um, and once both of them have, have been doing that for 10 minutes um, which of course the uh, the one that uh, um, reaches its its set point earlier will will do um, after 10 minutes the whole system will revert to a, a float voltage which is equal for, for both chargers um, and then they can supply load. So let's have a little look at the um, uh, wizard that you use to program these things. 
Um, for that I'll have to uh, disconnect the live data. Um, just waiting for that and then once we're uh, disconnected I can reconnect but using the uh, the setup wizard. Uh, you get a warning about uh, making inappropriate settings, check your dip switches and then you're into this um, wizard screen. You can save and load configurations uh, to back them up um, or restore um, different settings um, and you can read the settings currently stored um, in the live controller. So here we go, it's reading and these are the settings that I put in. Um, there's a whole raft of them really. Uh, so that's the absorption voltage, uh, temperature compensation which stops at 25 degrees C, um, absorption charge time, um, not doing any extended charging based on depth of discharge, uh, the float voltage, um, uh, float timeout, so that would be if the if the solar array couldn't maintain the float voltage then after so many hours um, it will drop out of float mode and go back to a, a full charge mode but we don't need to do that here. Um, equalization, not using um, and then we've got um, uh, a whole load of other things. We've got the high voltage disconnect which is a, a, a shutdown for the charger if the absolute pack voltage reaches this um, and then it wouldn't reconnect until the voltage drops to this lower limit. Um, you can use that to uh, charge without using a float voltage level. It will shut the charger down and then wait for the pack to discharge to um, a half, a quarter or empty even. Um, and then a uh, absolute limit um, here, maximum regulation limit is the uh, maximum the uh, um, charger will um, try to get to itself, plus the uh, current limit. You can um, set the current limit at maximum, 60 amps, which it is here, or any value lower than that. Um, you can do a whole lot of other things like program the LEDs that um, show the state of charge on the front of the unit and its data settings for um, email notification and so on and the things that it will log in its uh, memory. So that's a quick look at um, the programming of these uh, Morning Star chargers um, and now it's just a case of uh, monitoring data from the cell log um, for balance problems in the pack um, and general performance uh, information from MSView which I can view on a PC upstairs which is on 24 hours a day. So this is the uh, data logging upstairs and you can see some preliminary data from the battery bank today. Um, on the top we have the uh, battery voltage and then in the middle we have the um, power in watts um, that was delivered by the uh, chargers uh, and then along the bottom we have a more complicated trace that shows uh, in red the uh, available um, strength of sunlight as a percentage uh, from a sensor on the roof um, that estimates uh, available power and then uh, the blue trace um, is the charge current from the 60 amp charger and the bottom green trace is the charge current from the 15 amp charger. Um, so you can see it's a very different uh, charge curve from uh, a lead acid one. Um, uh, the battery absorbs, uh, it, was, it was doing almost 60 amps um, continuously um, and it sucks it right up um, and then quite quickly the uh, battery voltage goes up to 28 and when it hits 28 um, you start to get this uh, falling off of current tapering down uh, the 15 amp charger reached this point earlier and then the big one uh, and then after 10 minutes of uh, this absorption phase both of them cut out and go to their float voltage
uh, as the uh, we went out for about an hour and the uh, the inverter was turned off and the battery voltage stabilized a bit um, all this time the charger was on float um, and uh, had no output power at all all the current and power is zero then we came home and uh, boiled a kettle um, and then didn't do much uh, and then I turned on the uh, automated immersion heater um, that runs off a load controller on this PC um, and you can start to see that the uh, uh, the float voltage um, was exceeded on the on the battery it started to fall below that so the uh, solar array was picking up the the, the difference um, and there's the bulk of that uh, power output is the water heater and then uh, my wife was doing some things in the kitchen um, with an extractor fan hood on the cooker and so on um, I might adjust the float level a bit as the um, the bank seems to um, discharge um, at a at a slow rate uh, during this whole period here um, it's been discharging at a rate of between three and four amps um, which isn't much it's it's the only the 100 hour rate of the battery so it could do that for days um, but I might tweak up the float voltage just a little bit um, and see what happens.